Hey everybody, God bless you. Thank you for watching. I don't know how to start this video out, so just thank you for watching. I want to let you guys know a little bit about me and how I became a believer and how long I've been a believer. So, if you are interested in that, please stay tuned. And also, please like this video, comment, and subscribe because I want my channel to grow. I want to be able to encourage other people. And how that happens is when you like the video and you comment and you subscribe, it lets the YouTube algorithm know like, hey, this girl got something. Let's pass along to other people. So please just share. I would love to reach 1,000 subscribers. So I can't get that without you guys. So y'all, I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm praying that you will hit that subscribe button. How I got saved. I got saved when I was actually 22. And some of you guys might know, I'm 30 years old. Woo, big 30, yeah, yeah. And um, I am believing for much in my 30s. Jesus ministry started at 30, so I'm believing God to move in my 30s. So <laughs> I've been saved for eight years, almost nine years. All right, so how this story started, y'all, I was rough. I was a rough, wild thing. Um, I still had like a quiet and kind of retreat, introverted kind of personality, but, um, and I was, I was a very sweet person, unless you mess with me, and if you mess with me, like, hell no, no fury. I might need to cut that out. <laughs> I was not nice all the time. I was nice until you ticked me off. Anywho, um, I did not see the things of God. I grew up in the church, but the church was not in me at all. And I grew up in a Baptist church. My dad, he um, had an encounter with the Lord in his younger years. And because he had an encounter with the Lord, he wanted to raise me up in the way that I should go. So he forced me to go to church. And it was a Baptist church. During this time, this church went through multiple leaders, preachers, and you know, the church dynamic changed a bit. And so, my dad, when he first came into the church, like he was on fire for the Lord. He was telling me certain things and I thought it, that it was cool. I thought it was, it was actually nice thing, a transformation in my dad. Like he felt like a safe place for me. So um, I like seeing that in him. And over the years of us going through this church and it going through different leaders, his fire actually started to go out and he wasn't as on fire for the Lord as I remember him being when I was younger. My, let's backtrack for a little bit. My dad actually like made me sing in the choir. I did not want to sing in the choir. I didn't want anything to do with anything public. And like he forced me to do it. My dad forced me to get baptized. He like, he forced me to do everything. I remember when my dad told me that Santa Claus wasn't real and that I was old enough to go to hell like he was just like like we're not playing games and in all of this like when he told me that I was old enough to go to hell and that I needed to get baptized and basically choose the Lord on my own I told him straight up I'm not ready and I don't want to get baptized and I'm just gonna go back and sin. Like I wasn't ready at that time. God was not drawing my heart and I was still a young kid and I, I was still thinking about Barbie dolls at that time. Like I wasn't thinking about sin nor was I even having like a clear distinction of good and evil. Like I knew some stuff, I'm not saying that I wasn't doing evil because even children have evil thoughts according to the word of God. <laughs> so it wasn't that I wasn't doing evil. I just wasn't ready. And I had not heard enough in the church to be drawn in. And so that's another thing, like up until my teenage years, I'm still going to church. I never heard anything about Jesus that drawn me to him. In fact, I really don't recall ever hearing a message about Jesus. 
specifically. The only message I recall hearing about Jesus is that he died on the cross for our sins and that he rose from the grave on, and that's Easter. You know, that was what I heard and that was it. Well, when I turned 18 and I graduated from high school, it was on like popcorn. Um, that was lame. <laughs> But y'all, I just rebelled. I rebelled. And even before then, I started, the rebellion was already sown in me because my dad had forced me to do so much that I didn't want to do, like singing in, in the choir. I didn't want to be there and you're forcing me to do it. And so it made me dislike it even more. And I actually liked to sing, but being forced to do it just like turned me off. So, when I was old enough to do what I wanted to do and get a job and I was no longer forced to go to school and like you can't force me to go to church anymore because I'm grown and I didn't live with my dad I had lived with my mom so I stopped going and I started doing what I wanted to do and y'all those were some hoochie five years and I thank God that I'm a new creature in, in Christ and that all things are passed away. And yeah, I went through a phase of just turning into lust and turning into other things. I see why other people did it. And that's why I did it because I saw other girls doing it. And I'm thinking maybe if I do that, it'll make me more likable. It'll make me more desirable. But it really didn't. Have you ever heard of STDs? spiritually transmitted diseases. Yeah, when you fornicate and have sexual relations with people that you're not married to, y'all just transferring spirits and it's a bad thing. It just added to the already deliverance that I needed. Time passed and I'm just going through it and my grandma, God rest her soul, told me that I should get this job at this manufacturing place. At this time, like, I hadn't really had a lot of work experience and I wanted the money. So grandma, she like, yeah, I got the hookup. I could get you in this place. Like it's, it was a good job and it was hard to get a job there. And so I'm like, okay. So my grandma, she gets me the hookup and she gets me in this job and I'm working. And I remember being, I remember being in so much pain and my grandma like giving me like these, she's giving me this advice telling me, Dee Dee, don't quit. I remember when I was working in manufacturing and my hands would hurt, like rub some rubbing alcohol on your hands, do this, do that, but don't quit. And I would just keep pressing through and my grandma would be like, you look, this is what she told me. Look over at the older people who are doing it and if they can do it, you tell yourself you can do it too. I did it and I stayed on to that job because I did not want to let my grandma down because y'all, my grandma would have been mad. Like I did all this stuff to get you hired and you just gonna quit. I had been working there, I don't know how long and my son's father actually had came in and he started to work there. Um, During this time, uh, I wasn't interested in dating him or anything, he just, I don't know, it was something in me and I just said, you're gonna be my friend because I was that kind of person that um, I did not take no for an answer and <laughs> I was like annoying. I kind of forced him to be my friend, but I really don't think it was too much of a force, but um, we, became, we ended up becoming friends and he let me know that he had other feelings for me. And so we ended up dating after a while and we were together for three years before I had finally had my son. Who y'all see? Jacoby, my little poo poo. So anyways, um, before I had my son, we're gonna back up, before I had my son, my mom had started going to church and she was going to a church at a family member's house. And she was actually changing and my mom was a rough character and I actually saw her changing. And I remember thinking that if anything can change her, it has to be God, like God has to be real. And so I remember seeing her change and she's just like, come on, y'all need to come to the church. Y'all need to get saved and y'all need to get married. And she wanted us to get married and he didn't want to get married and I did, but you know, I didn't need to. We end up going to the church and like we went on Easter because she wanted us to go and I thought that it was just what I saw. Like they were going through deliverance. I'm not gonna talk about that in this video, but maybe 
I will in another video. But they were going through like deliverance and doing all this stuff and I was like, what in the world? And it was just foreign to me and mind you, I'm pregnant. It was just a visit. And I remember seeing this picture on her wall. She had a black Jesus on her wall and I had actually never seen a picture of a black Jesus before that actually looked good. Like all the pictures that I had saw of Jesus and he was black, like he wasn't very handsome or attractive. But the Jesus that I saw in this picture, like he was very handsome. And I'm like, that's a black Jesus. That was God sowing a seed in me, like of a painting that stuck with me. So when I end up going home, I just remember saying, I want a picture of a black Jesus on the wall. I didn't, I used to draw, but I had no experience in painting at all. Nor like, I, I just knew how to draw. So I'm gonna actually insert that picture, y'all. It looks bad. Like now God has elevated my skills. Yes, God. I am a God-taught artist. Um, so that's how I'm able to paint half of the things that you guys may have seen on my channel. But I painted that painting and um, I just wanted it because I wanted a black Jesus on, in my house, on my wall. And I knew I couldn't afford it and afford to buy the one that she had. I knew I couldn't afford it, nor did I even know where to find it, but I wanted it. I just remember sitting at the table with my pregnant self, drawing this picture and painting it until it was finished. Time passed. And as I said, God was sowing a seed. He sowed a seed with that picture, but he also sowed a seed by connecting me with someone that I needed to be connected with in my future. So I end up having my son and I start having the thoughts of, I want to be saved. I want to be like these good church people, but I don't know how. I want to be saved. And I start talking to my son's father about it. And I remember specifically having a conversation with him. And I asked him, if we were to die, where do you think we would go? And I knew in my heart the question was hell because we were drinking, we were fornicating, we were doing a whole lot of things that we were not supposed to do. Neither one of us had received Jesus as our savior and we were far from him. Like I was living in straight darkness. And something else pivotal happened. I hate to freeze frame right here because this is a weird picture, but I also had a classmate to die and I had found out on my birthday. So that was really hard for me. And God forgive me for my thoughts at the time, but I look over at him and he says, I think I'm going to heaven. I remember thinking this fool, you were there with me when we were singing. What do you mean we're going to heaven? We're going to hell. Like, what you talking about? I didn't say that to him, but at that moment, I realized I was alone. And I, like, slowly turned my head, and I just, like, looked out the window like, I'm on my own. And, um, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> but I realized I was on my own, and I was going to have to walk this out on my own. And so, I just started desiring things of God. I believe I tried to read the Bible. I couldn't read it. I think I did. I'm not quite sure, but I just, what I did do was that I started to Google things about God and I started wanting to have a relationship with him. And Google is not the it's not a good place to start. It, at least back then, it was not a good place to start to ask questions about your salvation and about God. The Bible is the best place to start. And because I didn't start there, Google told me back then that God did not love me because my parents had me out of wedlock and that I was a bastard and that God does not receive bastards and I was going to hell. That was no way for, to have repentance for me because of what my parents did. And I'm like, huh? What? I didn't do anything wrong. I'm just trying to have a relationship with you. You don't even want me. And I remember saying, I can't help what my parents did. And y'all, I was so confused. Like I was going through it. I didn't know where to start. I didn't know what to do or where to go. I remember like, I just didn't want to sin anymore. Like I no longer wanted to fornicate. I no longer wanted to participate in other things that were sexually immoral. And God actually gave me the desire to not want to do those things. Like the feeling and the temptation left. And 
the last time I did it, it didn't feel good. And I was just like, yep, that's it. That's it for me. I'm not going back. Yeah, I had to, I didn't feel like doing it and I did it anyways and it wasn't even worth it. And so it was just like, yeah, no, I'm not doing it anymore. And I remember that I went to sit on my couch and it was a black sectional. It, it, this one that I have is way better. But it was a black sectional at the time and I went to go sit on it by the window and I remember I heard a voice say to me, I'm going to make you new. And I repeated it out my mouth, I'm going to make you new. At that time, I did not know that God was talking to me. I did not know that I was hearing the voice of God. I just knew that I heard a voice say, I'm going to make you new. So time passed. Um, I started to get attacks by the devil. And I didn't know that it was the devil at the time at first. I started having very tormenting thoughts come into my mind. And when I say torment, I mean blasphemous thoughts because, you know, the Bible talks about if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, there's no forgiveness. So the devil started sending blasphemous thoughts into my mind and telling me that I had blasphemed the Holy Spirit and that God would never forgive me and that I would go to hell. And y'all, I was so tormented by these thoughts. I could not make them stop. It was so bad. Like I would physically grab my head and cry. It was so bad and I was tormented by it so bad. And I got to the point where I was afraid to sit alone by myself. And at this time, my brother was living with me. And so I would ask him like, please come sit in the room with me. I'm, I was scared. I was scared to be by myself. I was scared to do anything. I was scared to live my life. And I had just had this brand new baby and at the same time my son's father was also treating me really really bad like after I had our child like he wanted out of the situation and it was really really bad it was really really bad he didn't want to get saved and he didn't really want he just didn't want a family life and so it was just really rough and I was depressed and I was being attacked and I called my I called my old pastor from the church of which my dad had went to and I told him what was going on and I told him the thoughts that I was hearing and he was just like, oh, that's the devil. And he didn't tell me anything else. And I kept trying to reach out to him and he kept like ignoring me and putting me off. I'm not saying that he was doing it on purpose. I believe that he was busy and he had other obligations, but he didn't off he did not offer to pray for me. He didn't offer anything. He just said, that's the devil. And that was it. And it didn't offer any solutions to my problems. And so I heard a voice say to me, call so-and-so. So-and-so is the person where my mom had went to church and I saw them going through deliverance. And so I called my mom and I asked her for her number and she gave me her number and I called her and I told her what was going on. She told me, yes, come by, come by. And so at this time, I did not have a car. So I asked my, my son's grandma, I asked her to give me a ride, you know, if she could give me a ride to this person's house. And she's like, yeah, because they knew I was going through and I was actually going to spend the night with them, like my son's family. Like they were just like, yeah, she can come over because they knew I was going through y'all. Y'all, I lost my mind. And... I lost my mind. It was to the point where like, I was had to go to the hospital to take, I think it's called Xanax. Um, like I was going through like to the point I was getting like about to pass out in public. It was so bad. I go to this person's house and as I'm walking to the door, I get this feeling that finally I'm about to get help. Finally, the problems that I'm dealing with, I'm about to get help with this impossible problem. And I don't know how I knew. I don't even know why that thought came to me. I'm really just hoping that I was gonna get help. And I go to the door and she just hugs me. And I don't know why. I know why now, but at the time I wasn't used to just crying for no reason. And I wasn't used to things of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know the Holy Spirit was. Not really. I just read one scary thing about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I didn't even know who the Holy Spirit was. But I didn't know what was going on. I just started crying and I did not know why. I knew I was hurting, but it was like a release of everything that I had been holding on to and the fears and how the enemy had me 
down like bad and she started to pray over me and um talking to other beings and next thing I know I'm on the floor <laughs> we were hugging at the door then we're on the floor and she's praying over me and she is speaking to a spirit and she's telling it to come out in Jesus name and I'm sitting here like, what in the world is going on? <laughs> and to my surprise, um, I actually had spirits vocalize themselves out of my mouth and it sounded terrible at the time. It sounded like millions of voices combined into one and screeching that were screeching out of my mouth and it, something actually came out like I threw up. And this is what I had saw the people doing when I went to church when I was pregnant. And I was like, what the heck are they doing? And I was just like, uh-uh. And it happened to me. And when I got up, I said, what was, like, I remember being on the floor. Let me back up. I remember being on the floor, y'all. And like, cause my head and stuff was turning by itself. And I remember thinking, oh no, this Emily Rose stuff is real. The exorcist stuff is real. And I just remember being like scared, I was scared. And I got up and I'm like, what happened? What was that? And she's telling me, don't worry, it was a spirit and we cast it out and it's gone now. And I ended up spending the night at her house like um, because she prayed for me at her house. Her church was actually at her house and I slept there and I listened to, it's called Reflections on Daystar and that stayed on all night. And she actually sat in there with me the whole time while I was sleeping and I guess she was praying, but she just stayed in there the whole time while I was sleeping and just watched me. And y'all, that was like one of the most scariest nights of my life at that time. I don't remember exactly how I got home, but when I got home, I told my son's father about my experience and I told my brother about my experience and they knew that I wasn't lying. They knew that I was crazy. Like I was going crazy, but I wasn't that crazy to tell a lie about something like that. And so, you know, I let them know what was going on and basically, as time kept progressing, God wanted, he was calling me to take my walk with him more serious and to like not just be passive but actively pursue him because he let me know that if you go back to where you come from all those things are gonna come back and they might come back worse i was scared i was scared to go back and not only was i fighting for myself i was fighting for my son because i didn't want him to be dealing with those kind of things either after that like i just kept going to church Kept going to church, kept getting prayer, kept getting deliverance, and then, you know, it was a walk. Like, nothing happened overnight. I had to have someone disciple me. I had to have someone pray for me. I had to have somebody work for my deliverance for me. Like, God used somebody to help deliver me and help me walk into my freedom. And during that whole time, I ended up going on fast. And it was like, when I went on my first fast, everything changed. And like, my walk with God got so much better, so much easier. Like, I started to see His goodness for the first time. And things just kept going and now here we are today. And I can say that I have been through many things in my walk with God. I have encountered many things and I'm still learning. God has different callings on my life. Uh, I will tell you guys one of the gifts that I do have. It has served as something that I have to grow through and um, I will not complain, but you know, the Bible talks about the different gifts that are presented through the Holy Spirit. And one of the gifts that I have is the discernment of spirits. And I found that out very early on. And um, thankfully, God allows me to feel what different spirits are and I can identify what they are. And He's used me to help other people when they're dealing with certain things, like struggling with things in their thoughts. God will tell me, he will show me, he let me feel and see exactly what the spirit is doing to the person. And it has been, it has been, it's been something, but glory be to God for it all. He also has some prophetic gifts in me where he's used me to prophesy and even I've seen prophetic things come to pass in my life, things he have prophesied and they actually came to pass. And that is just a gift 
that God gave me. I don't glory in it. I don't, I mean, glory to God. But um, that is pretty much the story of how I became saved. And by the way, the reason I did not go back is because I would keep it in my mind. Why would I want to go back to having demons screech out of me? I, no, thank you. No, thank you. I thank God I never looked back. It has not been easy, but glory to God. Like, God is good in all things. Like, I've been through so much on my journey and trying to mature as a woman, a woman in general and a woman of God, and to understand that I have to have faith in good times and in bad times and that God is good regardless of what we see. And that is the maturity that we get as believers as you keep walking. Like when you're a new believer, you know, you might throw a lot of temper tantrums like a baby, like you throw temper tantrums. But as you grow up, you stop doing the things that you used to do. And I have been fortunate enough to live to the age of 30 to be able to grow in the things of the Lord. And I look forward to many more years with him and aging gracefully and declaring his works throughout this earth and to share my faith and hopefully spread some kind of light throughout this world. And I want to hear him tell me, well done, my good and faithful servant, and bring up all the works and give me rewards for them. I hope my works don't get burnt up. But y'all, I just wanted to share with y'all my testimony of how I actually got saved. And, um, I know some of y'all did not know how long I've been walking with the Lord and it might seem like I'm just like a brand new believer just coming out the gate. I just don't share everything on YouTube because I don't really have, I'm trying to develop my audience and making sure that God sent the audience that he wants me to have. And I want you guys to be able to receive what I tell you. And I don't want to say anything and it's like, oh God, that was weird. So I don't tell you guys everything. And I know that everybody who is subscribed to my channel is not a believer and that's okay. If you watch this video, I thank you so much. And I hope that there was something in it that touched your heart. So I just want to thank you guys if you stuck to the end of this video for watching my testimony. And I hope you guys subscribe. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. And as always, God bless. Bye.